Um, we do this already in today's world sometimes when we decide to play a game. Um, so take, take the game of golf. You might say, okay, there is no real natural purpose. To, I, I, don't, I don't really need the ball to go into the sequence of 18 holes. But I'm going to set myself this goal arbitrarily, but I'm, now I'm going to make myself want to do this. And then once I have set myself this goal, now I have a purpose, an artificial purpose, but nevertheless, which enables the activity of playing golf where I have to exert my skills and like my visual capabilities and my motor and my concentration. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and maybe you think this activity of golf playing is valuable. So you set yourself this artificial goal that, that could be generalized. So with games, you set yourself some artificial goal. Moreover, you can impose artificial constraints, like rules of the game. So you sort of make it part of the goal, not just that a certain outcome is achieved, but that it is achieved only using certain permitted means and not mm -hmm. other means. So in the goals, you can't just pick up the ball and carrying it, right? You have to use this very inconvenient method of hitting it with a golf club. Similarly, in a solved world, you could say, well, I set myself this artificial goal. And then moreover, I make it part of the goal that I want to achieve it using only my own human capabilities. There is this technological shortcut. I could take this, you know, nootropic drug that would make me so smart that I could just see the solution immediately or, or enhance my body so I could sort of run 10 times faster. But I'm not going to do that for this purpose. I'm going to restrict myself. That's the only way to achieve this goal that I've set myself, this artificial goal because it includes its constraints. And it might well be that uh, that would be an important um, part of what these utopians would choose to do in creative ways to develop these increasingly complex uh, and beautiful forms of, of game playing where they mm. select artificial constraints um, on their activities precisely in order to give opportunity for them to exert their agency and uh, striving. Yeah, I'm sure like that's just something like naturally as humans, we would just be craving. And, and so I feel like there'd be a lot of that going on if, if we were in a, a solved world. So how do you think entrepreneurship will change in this world? You mentioned that there might be still some jobs in a, in a solved world. So what do those jobs look like? And how do you think entrepreneurs or what do you think will happen with entrepreneurs or it, will there be any chance to kind of innovate in a world like this? Well, um, so... The kinds of jobs that might remain, I think, are primarily ones where the consumer um, cares not ju just about the product or the service, but about how the product or service was produced and who produced it. Um, so sometimes we already do this. There might be some little trinket um, that maybe some consumers are willing to pay extra for if it were handmade or, or made maybe by like in, indigenous people or exhibiting their tradition. Even if like an equally good object in terms of its objective characteristics could be made by a sweatshop somewhere like in Indonesia, like we might just pay extra for having it made in a certain way. So to the extent that consumers have those preferences for something to be made by human hand, that could create a continuing demand for some forms of human labor, even mm. at arbitrary levels of technology. Um, other domains where we might see this is, say, in, in athletics, you might sort of just prefer to watch human sprinters mm -hmm. uh, compete or, or human wrestlers wrestle, even if robots could like run faster or mm -hmm. wrestle better, like that might... so. I keep thinking sports is not going to go away. That's what I keep thinking. It, yeah, it, it could last. And yeah. then... And that might be an important spiritual realm, like you might prefer to have your wedding officiated by a human priest rather than like a robot priest, even if the robot could say the same words and etc. Um, so those would be uh, cases. And that, that might be sort of legally constrained occupations where like a legislator or a attorney or public notary or like where whatever, for whatever reason, the legal system lags and sort of creates... Because the human uh, barrier, morality might be... Barriers to automation, mm -hmm. even. But, um, um, but in terms of entrepreneurship, I think that ultimately it would be done much more efficiently by AI entrepreneurs. And um, uh, it would be more a form of game-playing entrepreneurship that would remain. So like you could create games in which uh, entrepreneurial activities 
are what you need to succeed in the game. I mean, like a kind of super monopoly, right? <laughs> uh, um, and and that, 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 that could be a way for these utopians to sort of exercise their entrepreneurial uh, muscles. But there wouldn't be any economic uh, need for it. The AIs could find and think of the new things, the new products, the new services, the new companies to start better and more efficiently than, than we humans could. How far in the future do you think a solved world could be? Well, I mean, this is one of the $64,000 questions in some sense. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm, my, I'm impressed by the speed of developments in AI currently. And I think we are um, in a situation now where we can't confidently exclude even very short timelines as of, of like a few years or something. Um, it could well take much longer, but we can't be confident that something like this couldn't happen within a few years. Um, it might be that, you know, maybe as we're speaking, somewhere in some lab, somebody gets this great breakthrough idea that just unhobbles the current models to enable basically the same structure now to perform much bigger. And then these unhobbled models might then apply their like, greater level of capabilities to making themselves even better. And something like that could happen within the next few years. Although it's also possible that if it does not happen within... If it does not happen within, say, the next five years or so, then timeline starts to stretch out. Because one of the things that has produced these dramatic improvements in AI capabilities that we've seen over the past 10 years is the enormous growth in compute power used to train and operate frontier AI models. Um, but that rapid rate of compute growth can't continue indefinitely. Uh, the, the scale of investments. It used to be 10 years ago, some random academic could run like a cutting edge AI on, on their office desktop computer. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, um, we are talking multi-billion dollar data centers. Uh, OpenAI's current product is Stargate, right? Which in its first phase involves a hundred billion dollar uh, data center and mm -hmm. then to be expanded to a $500 billion dollar so you could go bigger than that. I mean, you could have a trillion dollar, right? But you, you, at some point, you start to really run into hard limits yeah. in terms of how much just more money you can spend on it. So at that point, things will start to slow down in terms of the growth of hardware. Then you sort of fall back on a slower rate of growth in hardware as, as we sort of develop better chip manufacturing technology, which happens a bit slower, and algorithmic advances, which is the other big driver of progress we've seen but it's only one part of it. So if the hardware growth starts to slow down and maybe a lot of the low-hanging fruits on algorithmic inventions have already been discovered at that point, then if we haven't hit AGI by that point, then I think we will eventually still reach there, but then the time scale starts to stretch out. Wow. And we might have to do more sort of basic science on how the human brain works or something in that scenario before we get there. But um, I, th I think there's a good chance that we are sort of... Um, that the current paradigm plus some small to medium-sized innovations on top of it might be sufficient to sort of unlock AGI. Now, I want to be respectful for your time because I know that we're a little bit over. And uh, my last question to you is, uh, first of all, I can't believe that you're saying that this solved world could happen in a few years, potentially. Um, so well, yeah, let, let, let's be careful. Yeah, yeah, I think we can't rule it out. But so then, so what we could happen initially, out, yeah. initially, what could happen is we get to maybe ADI, which I think will relatively quickly lead to superintelligence. Mm -hmm. And then superintelligence, I think, will rapidly invent further technologies that could then lead to a solved world. But there might be some further delays of a few years, like after superintelligence, maybe it will still take it a few years to get to some something approximately in technological And maturity. just because we didn't cover it, what is the difference between superintelligence and AGI? Well, AGI just means like general forms of AI. Uh, that's okay. maybe roughly human level. So think of AGI, one definition is AI that can do any job that a remote human worker can do. So anything that sort of uh, you can hire somebody remotely who operates through email and Google Docs and Zoom. Mm -hmm. Like, if you could have an AI that can do anything that, like, any human can do in that respect, that I think would count as AGI. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe you want to throw in the ability to control robotics, but I think that would be enough. 